Okay, so the story that we'll hear today is about a guy called Paul. Paul works for a company um, called Busy Place, and he's an accounting manager in the company, and not so often and he leaves, then he leaves the company over to public events. But when he does, um, it's a very exciting day for him. And this day came, and he got an invitation to get uh, to a conference in Italy, an accounting conference in Italy. And just because he was so happy about it, he decided to post this information on various public media. Um, following that, uh, the travel system also posted on LinkedIn and TripIt this information that tells that this guy is going over to Italy. On the other side of the world, uh, we have Diana. Diana works for the bad guys, and she was assigned to take over his mobile device and take as much information as she can from his device. So if you go back a month ago, this Diana sent Paul an invitation from LinkedIn uh, pretending to be a recruiter that uh, wants to connect to him. He's an innocent guy and he's decided over uh, to be friends with her and they're now friends for a month now. She is trying to collect some information, puzzle pieces, in order to be able to take over, to take over his device, and the day come, and she found out that he's flying over to Italy. What Diana does is she's going over to Google Play. She logs into Google Play from her PC, and what she does is, using a free online tool, she's able to download, sorry, she's able to download uh, an application, the APK, the Android file, that is supposed to go over to his device, she's able to download it straight over to her personal computer. And using another online tool, she's able to inject malicious content into this uh, application. So as you can see here, she was able to put this online, inject the malicious content into the application, and then the next thing she needs to do is just kind of create a plan on how to deliver this application over to Paul at the other side of the world. So what she does, she uses LinkedIn to find out this guy's email or phone number, and right after that, she sends a text message over to him saying that if you're going to Italy, you might as well use this kind of application that will allow you to plan your trip over there. He likes to make most of his time, not only for business, so he thinks, what the hell, I'm going to install this application on my device. What we'll do now is I'm going to stop this act of being Paul and I will, I will take my device over here and see exactly what happens when it does. So this is Paul's device. This is actually this device. I'm reflecting it through the screen using a USB. And I skipped the part of installing the application. I already installed it. So the method of how to install the application is known to everyone. Um, he just installed the app on his device. Uh, let's go to the SMS message and see that I got the exact same message as Paul got. If I click on it, it will take me over to Google Play, a fake Google Play, that will tell me that the application is already installed on my device. So I'm going to skip this part because I have this application already installed on my uh, mobile device. This application is fully functional. It's right here. And we just put a disclaimer here that says that this application is a demo application. It's fake. But it is fully functional. I can go meet some other people. I can get somewhere. I can do whatever I want uh, using this application to find my, my ways in Milan. But I'm going to close this application and just make sure that I'm not doing anything on this device. The other thing that Paul has on his device is a virtual container. He has box.net, virtual container on his device, and using box, he is able to put all sort of stuff, information, marketing information, financial information, uh, located virtually uh, on the internet, but securely and, and encrypted, and this is basically the corporate box account. Um, now, this guy, um, doesn't want to save anything locally on his device, so he, he chose to put it on box. So this information that you see on the screen now is on the internet. It's not physically on this device. What happens now is that this girl, Diana, she would like to execute a command to, uh, to run uh, on this device. So what she does, she uses SMS for that. So I'm going to take my device. By the way, it can be done with any device 
in the crowd today. Um, I'll just go over to my messaging and I'm going to send the text message over to this device. Now the device, I'm not going to touch it, okay? It's here and it will just get the message. As you can see on the screen now, you will see that the message just came in, hello Checkpoint Conference 2015, and that's it. What happens from now on is that this device have started communicating uh, with the attacker, with Diana. And if we will wait long enough, we will be able to see that this device sends information over uh, to the attacker. So I'm going to switch over to the attacker landing zone, which is where this, all of this information is being extracted and sent out uh, uh, to. So let's go over to the attacker's Gmail account. And what we can see here is that first, where's my screen? Yeah. So at first, what we see here that the SMS itself leaked out. So as we can see, the text from the SMS went out over to the attacker's email. Uh, on top of that, we can see that the device IMEI, IMSI, and the unique Android identifier has leaked out as well. So if it's going to be an advanced persistent threat or, or attack, Diana on the other side will be able to use this information uh, uh, to kind of uh, create more uh, attacks based on it. If we go back, on the email, we'll be able to see that I get the box content here. So although no information is being stored on the device, everything is in the cloud, I was able to take box, the box information and even save it over locally to my computer based on a token that is being used by the device owner in order to get uh, to his box account. Going back over to my email, I will be able to show uh, that the kind of events from, those, from this device were leaked out to the attacker's email as well. So if we would like to create some kind of a, um, a more sophisticated attack, we will be able to take the calendar events, know where and when uh, a meeting is going to happen, and right after that, start recording audio from this device. So we waited long enough, and we can see that there's another email that just came in. Clicking on this email which will show me that Everything we talked here in the last 40 seconds was recorded automatically by this device, although the screen is off and, and I'm not even touching it. So I can download the information here. Just let's call it 13. And if I click on it, we will be able to hear everything that happened here in the last 40 seconds. So let's do that. Okay. Long enough, we will be able to see that this device sends information over. So, this device is compromised, and since our guy Paul had a very good experience on his trip to Italy, he will never remove the application from the device. He will never know that this application has malicious content in it. Next time he will go abroad, he will use the application again, but when he goes back to the office, he sits in meetings and he, he put more information in his box uh, uh, virtual container and everything can be seen uh, immediately whenever the attacker wants uh, to get this information. Now, when we go back on to the presentation, and skip the installation part, we will see the net results. The net results of installing an application which is outside of Google Play, but no one knows that it's outside of Google Play because we kind of created a website that looks exactly the same as it. Um, the guys on the other side, Diana on, on, this, on this instance, got total ownership on the device. She was able to exfiltrate sensitive information and the cost of this information uh, created a, a very big impact, business impact on the company itself. At the same company, if we take this scenario and go back and, and, and look at a girl go, called Judy. Judy is the CISO of the company and she knows about those threats. Uh, the way to deal with those threats is not to tell our people not to install applications because if we will, they will never listen to us. So she knows about the threats and she knows about this information which is very valuable in the black market. So she decides to execute a mobile threat prevention uh, plan and policy in the organization. She chose Checkpoint, by the way. And then, let's go for the same scenario. 
he still gets the mapping, the city mapping application via SMS on his device. Second thing that happens um, that it's still the same application that Diana sent him. The application is going to be installed, and it is installed, but right after that, he gets a pop-up that tells him that this is not the real application. This is a malicious application that needs to be removed from the, from the device. When he clicks OK, he gets to the next screen that tells him everything about the threat. So first, it will bug him and pop up on the device every 10 minutes if he will, if he will not do anything with it. And right after that, it explains to him when he goes over to the threat itself that this is the MRAT, Mobile Remote Access Trojan. Um, if it would have been another attack, such as network attacks or, or other different attacks that can happen on his mobile device, he will get the right information to, that explains him what is it all about. When he will click OK here, the threat will be removed and the device will be safe again. So, this is the end user part of it. The end user doesn't need to know anything. The device is in threat right now. It's in high risk. It clicks OK, and the threat is being removed. But when we go over to the administrator side, uh, the CISO side, what we can see here that she gets an SMS message and, a, uh, and an email that tells her that there is a device in high risk. This device is Paul's device. The threat is uh, a, a package that was installed on this device and it's the, it renders the device to be in high risk. If she clicks on the name of the application, it will take her to the administrative dashboard, to the enterprise dashboard that shows her a very good picture on what's going on inside her organization right now. This is the legitimate application and if we look at the legitimate application, uh, what we will be able to see is that it comes from Google Play, it tells us that th this application doesn't have any risk to the organization and it gives us a lot of information about these application capabilities such as, for example, track the device location because if I'm going to Milan, I would want this application to know where I am in order for it to suggest me uh, stuff that needs to be done in, uh, that I want to do in, in, uh, in Milan. But when we switch over to see the same application that is malicious, we will see that this application has first a lot more capabilities than the other. It can access your calendar, access your contact, track your location, send SMS messages on behalf of the user. And it explained to us uh, that uh, this application is not coming from any market. It is a repackaged application and it renders a risk on the organization. If we go down a bit, it will explain us exactly what are the, uh, the, uh, the behaviors of this application and the capabilities of application. It also tells us that if this device has any vulnerability that allows uh, uh, root privileges, um, to take root privileges by other applications, um, we'll be in bad situation. And this is exactly what we did. Uh, we compromised the device and we were able to hijack um, the box content using uh, um, a vulnerability that is on the Samsung Galaxy S3. By the way, it's a stock device. It doesn't have any routing tools on it. It's exactly the same device as any of the other Androids in this room. The only thing is that Galaxy S3 has a vulnerability that, al that allows um, anyone who wants to take root privileges to do it. It also tells us, tells us that this application sends information over to remote servers, and this is the information that we saw that leaked out over uh, to the attacker. If any of you works for a company or owns a company that has more than 2,000 devices connected over to the internet uh, or to the corporate data, there is a 50 chance 50% uh, chance that uh, six or more devices in your organization are, are under targeted attack. And this is a research that uh, we did in Checkpoint a year ago uh, with Lacoon, the company that I used to work for, um, and, and found out that even if it's an iOS device or an Android device, they could both be compromised at the same level. So if you guys would like to see more of those demos on iPads, iPhones, or Android devices, you can go to one of the booths downstairs uh, and get to see more. Thank you. <laughs>